Right at a, at a heated know. moment, too. I know. Oh. How about now? Is it back? Don't know. We'll see. Oh, God. Yeah, it's a always, good moment, too. We always get the eSports Illuminati. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Shut this down, man. Seriously, are we back yet? I don't know. I don't see it. Uh, no. I see some. Oh, they can hear us, right? I mean, they're answering me. Let me see. Uh -huh. Oh, maybe not. The 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 way to find out if you're on air and, and to make it be on air is to just do something embarrassing. There we go. Just, okay, 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 okay. We're back. We're back on. Sorry about that, guys. I don't know what happened. I think it just stopped them. It didn't even air out or anything. But so where 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 did you guys? I didn't even know where it it, it actually. I, I think it just finished with me moaning, and okay. then you were gonna you were gonna say something. Okay. I, I mean, lost my train of thought. It's yeah. Me too. <laughs> me too. That's good. By default, I win the discussion. Uh, <laughs> so, there we are. Oh, gosh. I mean, see, the thing about Reddit is that it doesn't, it's not supposed to just serve the only purpose of, of bringing news, you know, just news to the community. It's meant to just bring up whatever is, whatever is going through the pulse of the community right now. Like, whether it could be, like, a, a meme, it could be... You know, something from DeviantArt. It could be some picture of a pillow. I mean, you know what I mean? Like, no, nothing. It's not necessarily all news breaking stuff. Richard. Yeah, no, I but mean, this is what it's... I mean. This, this is exactly right. And this is why, you know, there's some some uh, witty chap in, in the ch uh, chat has put CAD red equals, you know, absolutely pointless, uh, quoting me. But it but it, it, it's true. This is why we've had to change our focus. This is why we're one of the few places you can actually get a good uh, esports editorial because people will come to a website. Uh, to, to, to read that. People will post that on Reddit and you will see a benefit. I don't think it's as cheap as traffic baiting, if you like, but it's the one area that Reddit doesn't seem to sort of compete with you in. You lose on news. You are going to lose on promoting streams. You're going to lose on any form of promotion. Promoting streams? Uh, How do you lose on that? I mean, why... Because they I mean, go on, they, they get put up on Reddit and upvoted to the top of, of Reddit. You know, uh, who, who hasn't seen this, Fred? Four hours from now, this stream will be live and it's got a million upvotes and it's at the top. So what's who the point of me? Even... I mean, come on, seriously. Everyone. So what's yeah, the point, what's the point of me? <laughs> I make those, jeez. <laughs> yeah, so what's the point of me, uh, you know, then taking it upon myself to be the sort of guardian of the community and promote streams when I know there's already something better out there that's going to do it? Again, you're playing... Well, then you're, then you're going to get in then you're gonna get in the argument of like a... Like a a community that's like the gateway to everything and they're going to be controlling it and all that stuff so the i mean two you things, can have both of those things the, the the two things you can now do as a website to still uh exist in the esports space and still sort of compete if you like with reddit obviously you're not competing that's bullshit but you know to duke the system in such a way uh, that you have something that they don't actually there's three things but the first is an amazing piece of video content preferably uploaded to a integrated video player, not YouTube, right? So they've got to come to your website when it invariably gets upvoted. You can write a kick-ass editorial that's going to really divide a community and get people discussing it, and it gets uploaded to Reddit. And even though the discussion will primarily happen there, everyone's got to read the article by clicking on your link, provided no one copies it and the admins uh, actually do something and prevent that from happening. Um, and, and third... Uh, which is you know is having some sort of integrated stats system or you know something that reddit can't emulate like a betting system like team liquid has or something that's something that people might you know give two shits about if you've got those things that you can actually compete with reddit if you're just about news and forums fuck it you're already dead i mean that's that's the reality what do you think of that matt i i actually mostly agree with that i think mm -hmm. um i mean i, I don't agree as much that Reddit is like really killing um, journalism necessarily, but I, I do know that you know at Team Liquid we have to we we do things that Reddit you can't get on Reddit, and that's one of the things we try to try to focus on is because you know Reddit Reddit exists and people discuss things there, and that's kind of what you have to do. Right. So what are some of those things that you that, that you mean like? Liquipedia well, there's stuff like yeah, it's stuff TL. like Liquipedia, and it's stuff like TLPD, and it's stuff like the Fantasy System. Like the Fantasy System's really fun, and is something that is kind of unique to TL. Um, you know, just features that let people interact with each other in kind of a, a unique way that isn't necessarily just reading something. Yeah. So, how much of it do you think is has to do with just a lack of feedback system? 
I mean, because Reddit itself is a huge site, okay? They have a shitload of users, okay? So they're always going to have that user base that you don't have. I mean, there, there's going to be some people that are on Reddit that aren't on TL yet, and then you get exposed to it somehow through maybe a link from Reddit. You know, that, that sort of symbiosis or you know, synergy, right? Um, and that's a good thing for you guys, but I totally recognize the, 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 the malicious, or not the malicious, the negative parts of it that you guys have talked about. So, but how much of you think of it is the lack of that feature? I don't think a feedback system is a, a huge component of it. You know, I, mm -hmm. the forum system at TL is very specifically designed or it, it, it allows for kind of long form discussion to take place, which is really good. And it's something that, you know, the problem you end up having with upvotes and downvotes is that it's really good for like flash in the pan content where it's very like easy to, to consume, but it's very bad to have uh, like an actual ongoing debate. Because it, you know, there's no real. It, well, it kind of ends that. after like three or four comments. No, no, but I don't know about that because it, the the site is designed to be a flash in the pan. Like right, they exactly. auto they and auto it's, downvote it's you. Good at that. And they they auto downvote you just to get you off. Like that that's that's on purpose, right? For for um, just just so they they have they don't have stagnant they don't have stagnant uh content on their site, right? I, I think the problem well, you've got is there's always this window of opportunity. You know, and that's what I'm talking about. It's like, for example, with Reddit, it now means that, you know, if you don't get what, right, if what you're doing hasn't took to Reddit within two hours, it's mm -hmm. never getting looked at because it's going to fade down. And what you've got is like, if a load of people come in and downvote your shit right at the start, then any chance of a debate or a discussion is moot. And I, I you know, I, I definitely agree with Matt in the sense that, you know, any forum is great for flashing the pan content if you have it so new and popular uh stuff that immediately leaps to the top but if yeah. you were to integrate a down voting system into that what you would do is you would get anyone who was butthurt about no, it I, or... I agree with i agree with the down vote it's not a good idea i've never been a huge fan of the whole down vote the whole down voting thing um but still i think a feedback system is has always been good i mean a feedback system has been the the um really the core of a lot of sites like just look at like a site like ebay right i mean ebay would be nothing without a feedback system Right, like the, there's there's a sense of reputation and trust, and you know that trust that's actually built into a feedback system. Not to mention just what is hot. I mean, it's a true representation of what is hot. For, I mean, that's kind of what was meant. That's kind of what it was meant for, at least from the standpoint I think Reddit. Yeah, I, I, no, but I, I I get that as well. But equally, the thing is on Reddit, right? Because of the way it's policed and people can just create multiple accounts and all sorts of shit. Yeah. Um, the, the, it's again, it's it's another game changer because what me and Matt will remember is people working really hard to be considered pillars of gaming communities. People who used to take the time to make hundreds of really intelligent posts. Right, because they wanted to be seen as a respectful member of the community. They wanted to be seen as somebody worth listening to. They wanted to get some little, you know, uh, thing on their profile that distinguished them from everyone else. It was worth doing. Yeah. Now, uh, what we've got is we've got a total focus on being actually. I'd rather be anonymous and be able to say whatever I want and totally get away with it. Which is why you see some pretty, you know. I mean, look, I, I'm I'm not in the censorship, I am all for freedom of speech, but you do see some pretty outrageous comments uh, in, in Reddit threads. And, you know, sure, the downvote system removes them. I almost feel that that's like, you know, the one justification. But equally, by the same token, there's no, there's no incentive to not be that guy. That's the one thing Reddit doesn't have. And it's just a shame that more and more people within esports are more ob obsessed almost about being able to just troll or insult people or, you know, be, be able to say something deliberately contrary. There's no community that polices itself on Reddit, ultimately. You know, yeah. whereas on, mm -hmm. on, on localized on a community website, if someone was talking shit all the time, a moderator might eventually get around to banning them. But more often than not, they'd be kind of forced to change the way they behave because everyone else would be like, you're being a douche. Yeah. Okay. That's, um, that's kind of always existed, though, hasn't it? There's always been people yeah. that are doing that kind of crap. Oh, yeah, yeah. I mean, it's, it's pathetic, reactionary, childish nonsense. Most people grow out of it, absolutely. But I feel what Reddit doesn't do is, be, you know, there's no, like I said, there's no incentive not to troll on, on Reddit, if you like. Reddit, I mean, like, I can't even believe to this day people give a toss about Reddit karma. Like, how can you care about that? It's a number next to a profile. If, like, if the profiles yeah, themselves have no permanence, what's the point in it? 
And I just, I, I think what Reddit does is it has all the kind of hallmarks and the affectations of being a community website, but it lacks the heart of actually being a community in the sense that you're not interacting with regulars. You're not, I mean, very rarely. Well, it you're wasn't meant to be a community though, right? I mean, that's that's not what it was meant for. It's just kind of what but it's turned into. when you create a subreddit and it becomes the front page for a community, you need to adopt some of the good things that, that a gaming community would bring. You cannot just have the traffic and the nonsense without the heart of what a, a community is, which is, you know, individuals that, are, you know, they have altruistic behaviors. They give something over to the community. Yeah. People who are knowledgeable, insightful, want to share it, want to build the community. I mean, I wouldn't even say Reddit per se does a good job of building the communities it represents. Hilariously so in the case of League of Legends, where you get people like Joe Miller saying, you know, it puts a post up saying, watch this game. And they ban Joe Miller from the League of Legends subreddit. <laughs> A guy that who, happened. Wow. Yeah, absolutely true. <laughs> he, wow. He'll he'll verify this. They ban somebody that has promoted the game that makes their subreddit relevant and exist because he's not adhering to the rules of self-promotion. Well, let's follow that to its logical conclusion. If Riot don't self-promote and the game fails, what are you jerk offs doing in a subreddit about that game? Yeah, Nothing. But that, that, could, that could be you know that, that's. A human is a moderator, right? A moderator has a lot of a lot of power to do things like banning people. So that's that's not representative of the site itself necessarily, as much as a single you know maybe a single person that's doing just making a mistake. I guess you could say. Well, right. maybe, but but, I mean, but again, they, they come out and they, they stand by these ridiculous decisions because, I mean, you've got to understand as well, if you ever have to interact with anyone from the Reddit community, be it a simple moderator or someone a little bit further up the pecking order, mm -hmm. the arrogance, the arrogance, the sheer arrogance of these people, they view community sites as needing them, not subreddits needing the community. And... You yeah. know, it's it's they're they're horrible people to interact with, especially if you do have that dependency there. You know, like I'm I'm talking about self. I'm look a site like us. It's neither here nor there for us. We we will continue to exist regardless of what Reddit does or doesn't do to us, whether we're allowed to post or whether we're not. Um, you know, that's irrelevant. You can shadow ban all our stuff. That that's happened. Mm -hmm. um, you know, it doesn't matter. Fair enough. We'll keep our distance. You do what you do. We'll do what we do. Um, but, you know, ultimately, I feel sorry for the sort of self-created sites that need Reddit to draw any attention to what they do. You know, prime example, again, in the League of Legends community, Cloth5, uh, who have done some really amazing content. And they were getting banned from Reddit. They were getting flamed on Reddit just for simply putting up links to their own website and saying, please, can you come and support us? That's bullshit. There's just no two ways about it because... We need, if you want esports to grow, you've got to pull everyone that's below where you are up and then elevate yourself and then do it again and you keep doing it that way. What Reddit wants to do is it wants to maintain this bizarre status quo where it seems to think that if esports, you know, if the esports games that made the subreddits what they were ceased to exist, they would somehow still have some awesome place of prominence, which is absurd. I don't know. Now, what do you think about that? <laughs> I don't know. I don't. I don't know how to follow that up. I don't, I'm not so sure. So passionate about it. Um, I. I just kind of. You know. I kind of feel like Reddit has its place, and then the community sites kind of fill a different role. Um, it's. You know. There's. There's a fairly different amount. Fairly different kind of content that both are good at showcasing because, Reddit just isn't. You know. The. The way the upvotes and downvotes, um, promote content is just not good at some kinds of things. And that's just kind of how. Yeah. How it is. Yeah. For me, it's Reddit is. Gosh, what's a good way to put it? Reddit for me isn't that much different than Twitter for me. It's just, it's just a more static form of Twitter, in my opinion, because it, you know a lot of people do use it as a way to to market things. Like you know, I let people know about my shows by doing it. You know, for instance, right? And for me, it, it is just like a, a kind of a way of a, like another marketing channel. Or and, and other people they like to you know they like to show these these funny pictures and that sort of thing. And it's their way of just marketing in that too. I mean, you're just kind of trying to, to distribute that and that, that sort of thing. Um, it's nothing more than that for me. Like I, I, even though I feel like it does represent kind of the pulse of the community a lot, a lot of times, where it's just easier to see what where the pulse of the community is at the current, like that current day. I don't think it's meant to be a community site. I mean, like it's not meant to be the community. Um, at least I don't see it that way. 
Uh, so yeah. it, if it is becoming that, then that's you know that's an so, issue with the community. So, so Reddit to the first port of call for people who follow games. You know, there's no denying that. There's no denying League of Legends does not really okay. have a satisfactory, you know, a satisfactory community website. That well, that's provides League of Legends, kind of... though. League of Legends is different because League of Legends. Well, has I, never I would had say any. the Dota 2 community pre- would probably. I mean, again, I'm sure people will disagree because I'm having the audacity to talk about Dota 2. But the, uh, I would say that the subreddit is probably the front page. Maybe that would jo- join Dota, which is obviously owned by a company called Freaks for You, but. Um, you know, I, about I, I probably, net, dude. <laughs> yeah, no, I, I get that. I, I totally get that. But what I'm saying is, th- these if these are the trends that are facing us within esports, even a, a site like as big as TL is not in an unassailable position. That you know, we need to really think carefully about how we interact with Reddit because I think it's potentially, potentially dangerous. It's been a game changer in terms of how community sites operate. There's no doubt about that. We also know how it stifles or can stifle smaller community websites from rising up and again this is undeniable it doesn't help people get their uh, content noticed it just seems to snowball and and kind of promote what is well, already that's, popular see, anyway. that's what i kind of disagree with because like for my show it helps right for maybe written articles maybe you're right there i don't know maybe, maybe you're right for you know so it does help i mean I, you can't deny that it does help in, given certain content yeah i don't know that it actually stifles yeah smaller sites from because i feel like a lot of those smaller sites would like how do they rise up to begin with anyway how would they do it before mm-hmm. reddit right. they have to do the same kind of thing where they're cross promoting on ah, their but websites, I disagree don't because they? back in the day it was word of mouth right like forget 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 the whole social media let's talk about how it was back in the day right where a gaming community would be like wow team liquid is the place to go to for starcraft man it's kick ass but if another smaller website say a team website for one of the teams had done a really good article it would probably get put on the team liquid forums but equally people would just talk about it did you see that article they'd spread it around word of mouth would spread and all of a sudden that website would have its own you know st- stature people would check it now i don't need to check multiple websites i can go to reddit and right, what's the top ten threads? No, 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 no. Here's a silly picture. Blah, blah, blah. Here's a, a video made by Riot itself, which certainly doesn't need any form of promotion because they're pretty good at promoting their own shit. In case you okay. hadn't noticed, and That's... all of us, and, and, and the, the guys who really need the leg up are down here, not getting up votes because to get up votes, you've already got to be popular anyway. And that's the problem. That's the dichotomy right there. That's the issue, I think. Um, but back in the day, before it existed, word of mouth. Word of mouth was key. Gaming, everyone in the gaming community would talk to everyone else about what was good, what was righteous, who was producing good content, who was doing good work. You know, it doesn't well, it doesn't work I, that way anymore. I think, I think the I, I don't totally disagree with you. I mean, I, I I do disagree with you on the standpoint of of word of mouth is this old style, you know, communication and viral. This old school viral is is better than viral today I, I don't agree with that I absolutely don't agree with that but in terms of reddit I think maybe that that's an issue because there's only 25 slots you know if there was actually a different you know maybe if there were three listings and they were categorized a little bit differently you know something like that might you know might open up more opportunities for these not so popular you know who are posters or not so popular their uh, subject matters to you know to get some attention right um but again that that's that's more of a design of that site but in general though i mean i think i think making viral more efficient is a good thing i mean i i don't think old school word of mouth is necessarily better you know it's just like I'm, saying I'm, like we didn't have twitter you know or we didn't have the social media at all i'm in you know? i'm in press rooms mm-hmm. Week in, week out, mm-hmm. right? And the standard has totally changed. The, the, what people care about has totally changed. Mm-hmm. It's not, let's just do a really good interview. It's not, let's just do some really good work, and I'm sure it's going to get some truck, and people are going to find it all by themselves. It is. They all sit there, all the journalists, whether they want to admit it or not, and they're all Reddit fixated. How can we get it on Reddit? How can we get it to the top of Reddit? Why is his interview with the same guy at the top of Reddit and not mine? Reddit, Reddit, Reddit. That's all they talk about. Because that's... That's, that, that's because Reddit's such a... I mean, they, that's because Reddit, the site itself, gets so many hits. I mean, that, that's like saying any web, website that gets a ton of hits, trying to get some kind of, you know, some, some kind of placement on that. Like, I want placement on Facebook's front page. I mean, you know, like, it's kind of... 
it's a little bit of that form of thinking, and it's it's not wrong from the standpoint of marketing, right? It's just yeah, I just feel so. I just feel sorry for the the companies that back people going out and covering events, and I mean, like take Acer Esports. I can talk about this. My good friend Thorin, who's <laughs> one of the long-standing uh, esports journalists, absolutely worthy of of respect even though we've not always had a great relationship i've always respected the work he's done and now we do have enjoy a better relationship because you know, i've stopped being as much of an asshole but um you know the the reality is um he goes out and he does the uh grilled series of interviews mm -hmm. acer say to him i don't even care if you put this on a site all we want is the reddit traffic now if that was to consistently fail and you know, Duncan's done a lot of work and, and, and finally, you know, around about the 40th time he'd done one, League of Legends started to notice it and he started doing League of Legends personalities and it started getting upvoted in the League of Legends subreddit. It's all worthwhile. But if that was to change and for some reason he came out on his Twitter and said something like, I don't know, fuck Reddit. So all the Reddit community were like patrolling around, oh, that's that guy who said fuck Reddit, so they downvote him. Acer are going to get rid of him. We're going to lose that content. That's never going to come back unless he can be bothered to do it off his own back, which let me tell you, as someone who's put a decade into the esports industry before you even get a sniff of an actual good paying job, he's not going to do it off his own back because who the hell would? So we would lose yeah, him and we would lose him because of the way the Reddit system is. But that's, I mean, it doesn't matter if it's Reddit, Richard, or it's something else, you know, it could be, it could be another site. I mean, if you're, if you are going to wrong like a community or a website or something, then I'm not sure where you're going with that. I mean, you're, you're basically saying that Reddit's super important today, and I, yeah, I agree. It, it is super important. So yeah, but what, what 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 I'm saying is, it's it's super important, but it's broken. It doesn't do what it should do, and it doesn't help community sites out by and large. It might help out the odd few. And again, I will I will give the distinction of saying the StarCraft Two subreddit is really good, but I expect that from a community which are probably the most intelligent. Uh, and, and high functioning community I've ever interacted with. They gen, gen, genuinely do try and reward good content. They genuinely do try and use their subreddit for what it is used for. And do that's you, brilliant. Do you think Most it, people don't. Do you think it steals more, Matt? Or do you think it gives more? I mean, with Team Liquid? Yeah. I, Reddit. It probably, it's probably a net gain overall. I, I think um, Team Liquid's in a pretty unique position, though. It's a pretty well-respected, well-established website that's existed for a long time. So that's yeah. not even, it's in a pretty different than the stuff Richard's talking about. Yeah, yeah. I, I kind of feel like some of it, though, it's not really the fault of Reddit directly as much as it's just a, an overall effect of esports having a much more broad audience now than it did five, ten years ago. Mm -hmm. And some of that, you know, there's, there's a certain amount of just people aren't going to necessarily um, do as much word-of-mouth stuff and they're, they're just going to kind of kind of like latch on to personalities and just back those things blindly and that's just kind of the way it works when you have a larger audience of fans that aren't super necessarily super hardcore like it's not you know the one thing in their life it's one thing in five mm -hmm. and so they they follow it kind of um you know more it's more of a cursory relationship for them where they just kind of they, they occasionally want to consume things but not all the time so they're not talking about it all the time and so that's that's why that you know there's not as much word of mouth necessarily it's more kind of people just finding things that they think may be interesting or whatever. I, I, you know, I, I just think that anything that wields such power and influence within the esports scene and how the esports scene is developing, I think they've got an absolute responsibility to, uh, you know, wield it correctly. And again, it's fine taking the moral high ground when you're on top, but games come and go, things change, popularity changes. Um, Reddit thinks it's got that beat because obviously it, it caters to everything, but. Um, well, it's funny because I, I, I don't think Reddit believes anything. It's just, you know, it has well, a lot to yeah. do with I mean, how we use Reddit. Reddit. It's like, is a, is yeah. a massive stretch on my part. You know, I yeah. realize that. But there's no other way to sort of talk about it. I'm not even sure myself who I'm referring to. I'm a referring to the staff. Yeah. I'm a referring to the <laughs> community. It's got a small staff, but it is man, an Reddit. entity, yeah. right? It is an entity. And, and how that entity operates, be it community driven or staff driven, it's operating in a way that, as I see it on a ground level, and, you know, Cadre. People might take the piss out of it, say it's a small site, whatever. This site's been around now for eight years or so. It's been, you know, w widely respected in Europe. It was at one point p perhaps the biggest, um, you know, multiple gaming portal in Europe. 
um, and I'm proud of like the, the work that we've put out on that website. Mm-hmm. I think it's yeah. a mass. You know, it's the biggest challenge that's faced me recently. Isn't that the pro- the primary gain that it's associated with has changed? It's been the fact that Reddit exists and something that I used to think when Reddit was first getting popular in terms of esports content, I was thinking this is really going to help us. This is going to be great. I remember the first time I had an editorial go to the top of Reddit, saw the traffic spike, was loving it. I was like, this is great. I mean, you know, yeah, a lot of people are saying I'm a douchebag and I deserve to die, but, you know, this is, <laughs> by and large, it's great. Hey, any, right? Anything's good, right? Yeah. Yeah, but but then now it's it's just, right, I put another really good interview up on there. It's had five upvotes. Um, it's getting to the point now where it feels almost like a waste of my time. And I think that's a shame. I, I know that if I'm like that and I'm in a full-time salary position thinking this is really a waste of my time because I'm doing this and no one's seeing it. Imagine what someone who's trying to make a name for himself, a volunteer, perhaps even put his own money into making a website and getting to events. And I know plenty of people did it. James Banks at Definitive Esports has done it yep. twice, mm-hmm. built a website up from the ground using his own money, right, and goes to events on his own money. And he can't even get people to notice his content so he can turn around and give some nice numbers to some prospective sponsors. I think that really it's, sucks. Yeah, I mean, it's definitely a, a little game, right, for sure, just trying to figure out... I mean, Reddit in itself is a game, right? Um, and you know whether you have to have the right people, you know, like you're interviewing the right people that have name power, or it's some crazy way to title a Reddit. You know, some people put quotes like the best quotes from a video, right, in their in their uh, Reddit thread and, and things like that. It, it's definitely a game. And oh yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh, I haven't got any issue with the tricks. Mm-hmm. Yeah, I haven't got any issue with the tricks. It's the fact that you've got to jump through all these ridiculous hoops just to get your shit seen these days. See, the thing and is, I, though, is like... it's always been the case, though, Richard. I mean, it's I, I don't, hard for I don't people think so. I don't think so. Like, it's... I mean, uh, I, I'll, I'll, I'll make the point briefly because I know Matt wants to come in. For, for, for me, right, back in the day, a, a, a piece of work stood by itself. It didn't need to be retweeted. I mean, again, this is when Twitter was still emerging. It didn't need to be up on anyone else's forums. People would just come to your website. They would click on it once a day just to see what was new and what was fresh. And if they saw a piece of work and they saw a name attached to it, they'd read it because they knew this guy is going to say something outrageous or this guy is going to write something really good or whatever reason. They'd click on it. The, the journalists, if you like, were personalities. They were brand names. But Reddit's pissed all over that. It really has, and um, these days it's like well, I, I just, you know, well, a, a well, piece of work doesn't seem to stand for itself anymore. I guess well, it's man, the, go ahead. I I kind of feel like that's not necessarily the fault of Reddit though, as much as it is. That's just kind of how people consume content. You know, there's a there's a lot of really good things out there that people kind of say they like, but they don't really actually watch. Like, you know, the, it happens all the time where we write really nice detailed articles on TL, and you know, the people reading TL kind of don't really care about it, and uh, that's just kind of how it is when you have an audience that's you know that isn't necessarily constantly doing only that thing and I, I don't know if that's I just don't feel like Reddit is the cause of that necessarily and yeah, I don't know I don't what either. Reddit could be doing differently to you know change that pattern yeah I don't think that's really I agree with Matt I don't think it's necessarily Reddit it's really the behavior of the community you know the community is a little bit celebrity you know they, they have this this kind of oh look I agree with that. how many, thing, how many right? times have I been on this show and said the esports community does everything bad that happens to it all by itself yeah. well, yes, it does, sure. right the oh, esports yeah. community is its own worst enemy like no <laughs> doubt about it fuck mainstream media fuck you know corrupt sponsors and all of this nonsense you the community generally make the worst decisions ever for your own gain, for your own benefit, whether it's indulging in the mindless tribalism we talked about at the start of the show, whether it's backing the wrong personalities, whether it's supporting the wrong games. Too. Yeah, yeah, exactly, <laughs> right? They do do good things, but by and large, everything bad that happens has happened because the esports community has enabled it to do sure. it. Whether it's like, okay, this guy hosted a LAN two years ago, robbed everyone blind. Let's all go and support it this time around because, hey, it's two years and we, you know, we need the money. Whereas a smaller LAN... You know, and again, I know this firsthand. I've just been attending a couple of smaller LAN events that are telling me, man, we're going to have to change what game we do because the games we've actually offered support to, it's brought in no streaming numbers. Yep. It's brought in no signups. So they're driving away what you need at the bottom, which isn't bigger events. Cause bigger events only cater to the elite. It's smaller events. And no one wants to support them because of the glitz and the glamour. So again, it's just an example of how the esports community does really bad stuff to itself. And well, nobody wants to support to those. Because, well, nobody wants to support those because just... 
you know, the return isn't as big as supporting something that's that's bigger. You, you know, it, there, there's different yeah, but, decisions well, there. Richard. But, but, I mean, e- it's not just... but, but e- equally, right, when you are given a platform <laughs> like a Team Liquid, like mm-hmm. a cadre, yeah. you know, to a lesser extent, like anything. You aren't given a platform to effectively uphold a standard. You are given a platform to uphold a standard of how the community should behave, not what it should think, but you should be drawing attention to the right things. You shouldn't be indulging in the 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 cheap stuff. You know, you shouldn't be, you know, kind of almost forced by that kind of culture to lower those standards. And unfortunately for you know for most people they exist for a uh, in a kind of it's it's investment versus reward reward pretty much across the board in esports equals traffic so you've got to pander at the lowest common denominator and reddit has just reinforced that lowest common denominator ethos you know, ethos over and over again here's here's uh, a picture you know here's a meme that's going to get 1500 upvotes in depth article just like what Matt's talking about no one's going to read it well that's bullshit that's, and again, it's like there needs to be some sort of kind of – I'd like to see the moderators be a little bit more like, you know, hey, guys, look at this. I'd like to see like maybe a moderator's pick on the side panel, things yes. you may have missed, you know, things like this to get good content front and center. You're not taking away the community's right to – to indulge in, you know, in the discussions about stuff that really means nothing. Like every Thursday, there's a riot. Again, again see, but that's the thing yeah. is, is that Reddit, Reddit is a very simple concept, and they haven't done anything more to it. They just created a simple concept. I mean, the the site itself hasn't changed that much since day one. I mean, the staff no, is, is is still tiny. You, that you runs would, the site. You understand moderators do drive things on that forum it's yeah, not they, they do by what they take away would be well they do by what they take away they do by what they take away that's what that's yeah, how moderators exactly. they, they do by what they take away they do by but, um this the way they prevent it you know like why do i need special permission to put my content up on on reddit from anybody it makes no sense to me why do i need that permission it, you know why can't i post it and then let people just choose for themselves isn't that what it's meant to be about but no you will get a stern message from well, the moderator so we can ask I mean, Team Liquid are guilty of that as well by yeah the we way. can ask Matt about that to, to, like modding right like a lot of bands and that sort of thing have happened in TL um, what are your views on that yeah, that's a broad question. Well, I mean, just like, I, uh, well, why? I mean, it's necessary, right? I mean, I think everybody would, yeah, would agree well, it's in necessary. In general, one of the things but... I like about TL is that we, we have a, a reasonably strict policy in terms of the things you're allowed to post. I think that's actually done, gone a long way in creating a really nice community that's able to have discussions about things. Especially, like, you know, we were talking about the tribalism thing earlier. It bugs me to no end when people pull that shit where they just talk about how they hate whatever game because it's not the one they're playing. Mm-hmm. We, we yeah. try to moderate that pretty aggressively on TL because it's such a crappy sentiment and it leads to such a, a terrible community. And I, I, think, um, I think having a pretty strong hand in moderation is actually really nice. It has been really nice for TL in terms of creating a place that's very readable. I and mean, you've seen YouTube comments and a lot of, you know, like, like uh, the old GameFAQ forums and stuff. And they're just total trash. Who would ever read that? Yeah. And so, you know, the way you got to you got to keep from turning into that is by having people that are involved that are willing to show people this is and is not acceptable. And I think that's gone pretty well for, you know, the form we created. But the- and and that that in itself can be a, a complete lottery. I I've had to do this recently, um, you know, w- with the emergence of CS:GO when CS Global Offensive came out, uh for a very, you know, for a few months um, our main rivals, if you want to call them, that HLTV.org, which pr- predominantly focused on 1.6, had lost a lot of ground. And their users were starting to come to our website because we were covering CSGO and it was abundantly clear CSGO was going to be the next big thing. Now, unfortunately, their users, again, they don't operate on, let's say, as high a functioning level as the average Cadred user. I don't know why that is. Uh, I- I'd be wrong to speculate, but it's a fact. <laughs> Okay, it is a fact, and it, it's evident if you look at the two forums. Now, we started getting those threads. We started getting those threads, like, you know, my favorite player, you know, is greater than yours. Um, CSGO sucks, 1.6 for life. Yeah. We started, oh, that's we started horrible. getting, oh, yeah. yeah, we started getting those threads. And we started getting them on a daily basis. And I said, you know what? Fuck this. I do not want that forum. I do not want that forum, even if it brings the numbers in. So I started banning people. And for every person who come from HLTV.org 
come over, made the stupid CSGO is shit thread on Cadred, and then got banned. They go back to HLTV.org and started saying, oh, you know, Cadred's run like a dictatorship. Richard Lewis is a Nazi. <laughs> uh, you know, fuck that website. And they would try and encourage people to stay away from it. Now, what that got us in the end was we actually played into HLTV.org's hands by effectively having this party line of saying, no, like, I'm not going to lower my standards and allow that level of discourse that isn't good for the community, that's not good for esports, and it's not what I want to wake up and see every day. And maybe that's wrong of me to do that. Maybe I should let people post whatever they want. Maybe CSGO shit 1.6 forever, 10 million times a day is a good debate for the esports community. But I say bollocks, it isn't. And I made that call. And unfortunately for me, that call played a very large part in us effectively losing the ground, which allowed HLTV.org to capitalize and become bigger for the game that we should have had sewn up. Mm -hmm. um, and we effectively drove community people away and it impacted on our own traffic for doing so. A little bit disappointed in the community for not standing by, especially the CSS people, for not standing by the website that did so much for them. You know, a little bit disappointed whenever I see a player doing an interview on HLTV.org they think, well, you know, 70,000 Indians are going to see this. Like, that's going to do anything <laughs> for your profile, right? You know, like a little bit disappointed when, when the same website they're now pandering to called them shit and not pros and, 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 and actively went out of their way to denigrate their efforts within esports for years. That they're now, that, that website that did that has yeah. now become the, the, their home. But that's that's esports, man. Again, you can't expect the community to make the smart decisions, and you're only as good as what you've done for them that day. But sometimes, having a strict moderation policy can be an absolute kiss of death. Yeah, it just I I think it just depends on on the site and how it's used. I mean, I agree with with both sides of it. So, um, just depends. It really just depends on the situation. But okay, why don't we uh, why don't we go to a break? That topic was nice and long, and then uh, we'll come back with some more fun topics on game communities. We'll <laughs> Sounds be good. we'll be right back.
All right, we are back. Let's switch the guys over here. Oops, yeah, I didn't mean for you guys to see that. <laughs> Hello again. All right, so we're back. Um, next topic we're going to talk about is I wanted to pose the question to Hayoka. Is it conf is it conflicting at times when you guys own a pro team, Team Liquid, right? And also you are a community site. So in my views, I think of a community site as being one that would be team agnostic. So you'd, you'd give every team equal, you know, just equal opportunity to whatever, promote them, market them, that sort of thing. But but on your site, you know, you have you have like, certain categories of of news and and real estate on the site dedicated to team liquid the pro team so talk to us a little bit about that and just well uh, the long answer is that um you know they're not even run by the same people the the team liquid the team and team liquid the website are yeah. two separate entities uh that that it is essentially agnostic you know we actually take a lot of effort in our news specifically to not cover the tl team more so than we do uh, like other teams, and Wax in particular goes really far out of his way to make sure that it's as neutral as possible because you know he he has a duty to to promote news in a, in a way about the StarCraft world and not make it uh, you know too focused on one team. Okay, well let's um, look at let's look at real estate on the site then. Um, right. Like on the left side, news. There's a liquid team news, right? Um, yeah, there's no EG team about, news. Right, and that's that's about the only overlap is that where it has the links with the TL Pro website, which is the the website that only has Team Team Liquid news on it. Um, then occasionally there's sponsor announcements too, but um, you know it's we try to keep it all to a minimum just because um, you know we don't want to promote promote the idea that Team Liquid's getting pr preferential treatment uh, in terms of you know how we report on actual events happening. Then why even have that then? I mean, if it's so little, anyways, like why even have it if because it does pose the question. Have have what? Even just this little liquid team news part. Oh, I don't know. Just you know, give some exposure. Do you guys sell anything in this? I mean, look at this. Do you sell any other team stuff in the store? Is or is it just? Is it just Team Liquid in the store also? Yeah. Um, is, we right. sold some MVP stuff for a while. Oh, did, oh, that's right. You did. That's true. Richard, thoughts? Um, I think it's uh, I think it's uh, difficult. If anyone gets away with it, Team Liquid do. Uh, I know they're very mm. serious about it because um, I've done interviews with Team Liquid players and I've tried to put it on their forums and they've told me no, um, that they won't even have their own players promoted in that way. Mm -hmm. um, so they're they're consistent in their application of rules that I think are stupid, but they're consistent, which is you know it would have been the easiest thing in 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 the world for a moderator to turn around and go, oh, it's Team Liquid players. Oh well, yeah, yeah, by all means. <laughs> because um, obviously it's all the same brand so they, they are very serious about that we're obviously as a website we used to be a team website as well like mm -hmm. I think a lot of esports websites were and uh, we realized very quickly that that absolutely was going to be you know there was no way we could maintain that so we got rid of the team and, and got rid of that whole aspect of things which still hasn't stopped me getting at least one email request a week from some you know player who got Sixteenth <laughs> is you know local land. It's a reform yeah, team. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> begging for like, hey, will Cadred sponsor me? No, no, they will not. Like, they absolutely will not. They like stop begging. Um, but yeah, I still get those emails, which are great. Um, but yeah, so you, you, I think you've got to because, I mean, there's enough, there's enough pressure on you when you're a news website anyway, to be biased towards certain teams, uh, because again, whether we want to admit it or not. There's pressure there, like you know, for example, EG will apply that pressure. You know, they've got a blacklist um, if you don't put out uh, powder puff pieces that pretty much promote EG. You end up on the blacklist and you get no content relating to EG players at all. Um, uh, so there's that. Or you know, for example, with, with us, you know, like Heaven Media, we've done a lot of work with Team Dignitas. We do a lot of work with Alienware. Alienware's a sponsor of Team Dignitas. Therefore, you know, we've got to be very careful because we're all kind of in bed with each other in some ridiculous menage a trois of shared sponsors. So you have to be very careful uh, about you know, if if you were to then add, oh, we've got our own team that we need to promote on it, I would say that would be credibility out the window, you know. So. Uh, yeah, I, I, I think it's if I if I were to pose the first question I asked when we first started, which was you know what what are the attributes of a gaming community, um, you know I think one of them would would probably be some 
organization that's not involved with any any teams. But again, in TL's case, it's a, it's a very very rare case because TL has just history, right? In, in Brood War mm-hmm. and and the way it started, so it's it's completely different. I mean, a good Maybe example they should would drop the a, word a good, team. Yeah. On the website, just be called Liquid. Yeah, Maybe that's true. Fun. That's actually no, no. We we already use Liquid for the the team itself. It's the other way around. Oh, oh. our typical oh, convention God. is that I, I, I'm thinking weird. The team or Liquid. <laughs> yeah. That idea might have just that's missed. True. Just that's missed true. out on how it should have been. But yeah, I didn't realize that. Yeah, yeah. wow, well, I didn't realize that too until you just said that. <laughs> that's funny. Um, well, I mean, that, what I was going to bring up just a second ago is that you know, League of Legends, obviously, right? There, there's always there's been talk last year that League of Legends doesn't really have a team liquid dot net equivalent right just this singular focused community site and and for a while you know there were there were team sites that were sort of providing the same function like team solo mid dot net and i yeah, think I csm was kind of like that for a long time yeah, i don't actually know i don't follow league that that well yeah yeah i mean i think that was kind of the the, the most popular one out of all of them like clg had theirs too but I think in the end, though, uh, it, it's like you, like you guys said, it, or like Richard, you said that it's really, really hard to to do, to really be consistent and, and and good about upholding that agnostic feel, right? And you know, I, I think Team Liquid has done a good job of it. And um, you know, I just just wanted to see if it was a big issue for you guys, given that you know it is owned by the same folks. I'd say in general, it's not really a huge issue. I, I think um, occasionally people call us be call us out for thinking that we're biased but it it doesn't happen that often overall i'd say i, I think most people feel that it's it's fairly neutral okay that's good does a decent job that's great all right next up i want to talk about the featured stream list which you know matt i know me and my, my myself and you're you always and talking about that because that is an obsession of yours man it's obsession of mine what are you talking about the featured stream list is going to get a restraining order against <laughs> oh you, every show it comes oh up oh my like. god no give me a break no i wanted to bring it up because you know we've we've had talks offline about it but i you know wanted to talk to you since i ha- have you on here what what the featured list really is and you know, I guess what it takes to be on the featured list these days. Right now, it's uh, we've changed it so it's almost essentially results based. You have to be uh, well, Are almost there completely. Late. Are they actually yeah, parameters? Yeah, right. You have to you have to be in WCS or have a round of sixteen um, appearance in a, a premier event on Liquipedia. Uh, and then in addition, there's a lot of guys who um, like you know haven't been uh, doing super well in tournaments, but have a a fairly large fan base still, and so the guys that aren't in WCS remain on there if they already were, if they have uh, 500 viewers or more on average. And then uh, it's a little bit different for the other notable stream section because that's a little more fluffy, but for the players itself, it's almost entirely based on WCS and tournament performance now. Okay, so the other notable stream is the fluffy part, I think is is the part that always um, intrigues me because one of the things that, that I've always discussed with you guys is, is really what that list represents. It is called the featured stream, right? So featured stream kind of, for me, denotes that, that the stream is going to be editorial. I mean, this list is going to be editorialized because it's not a popular list. It's not any, for me, it's not really any community-based list. It's more just whatever the TL.net folks decide, you know, what's on it. And that's fine, you know. That, that's the, you're, it's completely up, up to you guys, you know. It's what you put on, and you've chose pro gaming to be the the motivation or just the, the really the parameter for for putting them on. Uh, but the notable stream, you know, I've noticed recently you've been. I feel like you guys have been a little bit more um, open minded about, I guess you could say, you know, as to what types of people you you've put on it. So what are the parameters for the the other notable streams these days? Generally, because there's a lot of people who are kind of personalities in the scene, I try to keep it only to uh, the people that are uh, like casters for all the big LAN events. And then there's a couple people in there that uh, are just like really notable streamers. Like Maximus Black for a long time was one of our most popular streamers because he was kind of famous on YouTube for a little while. Yep. And so it's like that list is meant to be, you know, like a community resource of people that are notable for whatever reason. And so I try to keep it, um, but you know, the like the other list is, is fairly small. It's mostly like DJ Wheat and Day Nine and you know Artosis and Apollo, and it's the guys you see constantly at every event. Um, you know, just kind of when they do that. In general, I find that the other the for the other category, people don't like to watch a lot of 
uh, personal streams of guys who aren't famous for being players. They they are kind of interested, but not really, unless it's you know the, the few guys at the very very top. Yeah, I mean, like for instance, you guys just added a spite to it, right? Um, and you know, Corinne's been getting like pretty good viewership for for probably the last few months, and she's not a pro gamer. She's a player for sure. She's a master level zerg, and. Don't get me wrong, I think she deserves to be on the future list because she gets, I mean, when you're getting the number she gets, it just shows you that the community wants to see her. So I, f I feel like that list in some ways should reflect that. So that's why I was like, oh, that's, that's awesome that you added her. So explain that one a little bit. She was like our, our um, most watched non-featured stream by like a pretty significant margin. Mm -hmm. And she streams every day almost... I think she has set hours that she does it during the week. There's like a four-hour block or something. And she does a pretty good job of interacting with her viewers, which is why she has such a huge fan base. And so that itself just kind of bumps her up to being notable enough. So she, has, the, she has one of those streams where she like plays with her viewers and talks to them a lot and you know, like does a really good job of making it a fun environment to be in, which um, helps a lot. Okay, so all those factors come into play, not just yeah. purely numbers. Like if somebody was getting a 1,000 that are in non featured right now, but they didn't interact with their fans, they just played, would they be put on other notable streams or no? I mean, probably not, because it probably wouldn't be a very popular stream. Well, regardless of that, right? I mean, you're, that, if, if the numbers are the numbers, I'm, I'm just trying to see if the numbers really dictate it all or not. Uh, no, not, not all of it, but it's, it's a pretty important factor for the other notable section. Okay, okay. Stream quality plays a certain amount of in... Um, plays into a certain amount of it, but realistically, like your stream quality is what also what's driving your numbers, and so there's you can't separate those issues. They're they're kind of one and the same. Yeah, yeah, they they are one and the same, but there are there are rare cases. I mean, well, they are the same. It's just I'm just curious as to you know how you pick it because you guys pick the parameters as to what what gets put on, right? So, um, and with when you're a pro when you're a pro player, those parameters. I think are a lot la la or they're a lot more lax. Like the numbers, like the actual viewership numbers. I mean, there there are guys that get like a hundred or maybe maybe even two hundred viewers, right? That get put on featured just because they're pro players, and they're there for a long time sometimes. And which which tells me honestly, Matt, that we don't necessarily want to watch them, but you still put them on there. Wait, so who do you think gets 100 viewers that's been there for a long time? Not 100, but maybe like 200. I, like I, I've seen some folks like have 200 from time to time, like at, especially at night. At night. I mean, I can't, I, I'd have to look at the list right now. I don't have the list, like the master list in front of me. Um, but there are, there are people that don't get like, like super high uh, numbers, yet they, you know, they, they do remain on the list. I mean, unless you, you guys have done, I know you guys were going to, uh, do some changes recently. I don't know if you guys have done that or not. Right, that's that's the ones I was talking about where oh, okay. we we're being more aggressive now in, in moving people oh. out and then bringing them on. And okay. a lot of it's more objective based than it used to be. Okay, and that started recently. Yeah, but, um, maybe a month ago, two months ago. Okay, very cool. Uh, Rich, what do you think of the uh, concept of feature list there? Just just the feature list on TL. Um. Yeah. You know. It it's not anything I'm going to have a massively strong opinion about. I'm kind of, you know, almost I'm, I'm ambivalent in the same way that Matt is. You know, I think it's something that you have to, you have to sort of cater to now. And again, it's like we were talking about earlier. Obviously, there's a responsibility that comes with it. Um, but, you know, everybody's pretty much doing the same thing right now. And I think the onus generally tends to be on the streamers themselves to kind of get themselves noticed and get themselves into that kind of position where they're going to get featured in the first place. Um, unfortunately, that can lead to, you know, some not so great streamers getting a bit of attention over, um, you know, perhaps better better ones or whatever, you know, however you define better, mm -hmm. higher quality. But, um, you know, I, I think everyone, you know, we talked about it at the start of the show, everyone's realized that streaming is such a big deal. Now we've all tried last minute to kind of mash something together that works and draws attention uh, to people's stuff. And um, we probably haven't quite hit the nail bang on the head but i mean it's it, it's it's it serves its purpose and on, on, on team liquid i mean i've never i've never felt that strongly about the whole streaming issue as i do about journalism for example you know for obvious reasons um but yeah i, th I think team liquid do you know a, 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 a reasonable job like what you would expect them to do with a featured page 
I mean, it's a pretty tough thing because ideally you want to have a lot of, um, you want to use the featured list to kind of help promote streams that are interesting or relevant. But the problem you run into is that there's kind of this chicken and egg thing where there's so many streams right now that even putting new ones on featured doesn't really get them viewers. And so it's, you run into problems trying to figure out, you know, who, who exactly is notable and who isn't and where do you make the, where do you, well, that's, where do you draw the line? Well, that's, see, that's the thing. That, that's kind of why I was, when I was talking to you about, um, the the way it currently is a TL feature list is is it's not I don't want to say it's broken it's just I feel like it needs more function I mean there needs to be more categories or or function to it because right now it's completely editorialized like you choose you guys choose whatever gets put on it like whatever right, but there's no way to, to make that objective is the or no you way can. to not it could be it could be like th just to throw out to something you can make a popular list like the Twitch one right. You, you right, could but Twitch already out. has that, so why would we have that on TL too? That's, that's the thing. Because if everybody's coming to a community site, it's a one-stop shop type of thing. We we would see that. I mean, that, I'm just I'm not saying this is right or wrong. I'm just giving you reasons for it, right? Um, like here here's this idea that I think I was throwing out to you or Muck is that you can have a popular list, but you can also have a featured list where you guys get to feature whoever you want to try to promote and try to build up. You know, it's just that list changes. You know. It's pretty right, dynamic. but see, the, the thing is, is that ultimately the featured list isn't a very good way to build up streams. It just doesn't work that way, and people seem to think that it does. But realistically, you know, when we when we put people on there that aren't popular, it doesn't make them popular. And so it has to be, you have to approach it from the other way. It has to be a resource based on who you know. It who does, but it, are it accelerates watching. success, though. It accelerates yeah, the success. It really though. doesn't. People oh, say that, and dude. it just it just straight up doesn't. Mm. Getting real estate, I, 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 mean, I got to really? I got to agree with Matt on this. Like my experience wow. is okay. that yeah, seriously, because but it's it's not even about yeah. You're right. They could like Team Liquid could do like some solid work in terms of you know like I don't know taking some guy's stream. You know he's got 50 viewers. Uh, they've made the sort of uh, editorial decision that he's good and deserves more viewers. But you can put him on, and in the same way we were talking about the Reddit issue. It's not necessarily going to mean that next time he streams, he's going to get 100. Or next time he streams, he's going to have 200. Or he's going to somehow develop a cult following. Unfortunately, with the whole onus on streamers being entertainers and, and, and you know, you've got to kind of create your own user base, by the time it even comes to a community site promoting the stream, the hard yards is, have, have already been done. And indeed, on our new website, we're going to have a featured streaming thing on the front page. But it's just going to be ripped pretty much from Twitch, as in, you know, order of what's popular or not. And yeah, we've got the option. We can bump something to the top if we want. But again, the difference that would make would be minimal to that streamer's future, I think. Right. I, um, I think and, stream promotion has to come from other avenues other than just the list. It has to be, you know, the guy has to go on talk shows or you have to yeah. do interviews with them. Oh, you have to do all those things too. But but saying that, that real estate and placement on TL is not important is not right, in my opinion. I, no, 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 Especially me, not, who's actually... None of us are saying the, it's not like, We're just saying in the grand yeah. scheme of things, the perception that you have might be that it's way more important than it actually is. Oh. And certainly, I would say if there was a, an own... If we wanted to place... A responsibility on promotion of you know up and coming streamers. Um, you know, me and Two Good had this conversation on my show a couple of well maybe three weeks back now. Um, that and, and that is it's on Twitch. It's but by yeah, the time you get a lot of good to, ideas too. Yeah, by the time it gets to the community site, we're either promoting we're promoting the product outright. We're promoting what the product is, and we can put it on display. But that doesn't necessarily mean people are going to want to buy into it. You know, no, so but Twitch, it, it, Twitch is okay. So let's just say, let's just say, some guy wanted to start. If some guy has a great idea for a stream, he's really entertaining, and he wants to start a stream today. Mm -hmm. I mean, you have to have somewhere to start, right? I mean, yeah, that should be it, Twitch. What can you do on I mean, what can you Twitch on do in Twitch on? No, day no, no but this is what I'm saying. Twitch should have a community yeah. guy who's like, right, okay, I'm. Your oh, first oh, okay, podcast. that's what you're saying. Yes, yeah, so okay. you want so you want to start streaming, do you? Okay, cool. What's your stream going to be like? Give me some of your ideas. Let me have a look. Okay, well, yeah. that's been done to death. That's shit. That's nothing new. Uh, seriously, you're going to have to go and revise these if you want to get some real, you know, kind of hot content out there, or you're just going to be dime a dozen. Here's a, a, a document that we've already prepared for all wannabe streamers. I suggest you go away and read this. Or maybe he says, I've got this fucking wicked gimmick. I'm going to do this on air. It's, it's going to be incredible. And he goes, right, okay, brilliant. 
tell you what I'm going to do. I like your idea so much. I'm going to put it on the front page of Twitch and we're going to really promote it for the period while you're streaming. And then from there, if you can't make it snowball and get people to come back, it's on you. But on sites like me, you know, Cadred, Team Liquid, what we're doing is we're taking something that already kind of exists and we're either saying, you know, it's there and maybe if you happen to be on our website, you want to click this link and go and watch it. But we're not directly responsible or not nor is there a responsibility there on our part to kind of promote the an up and coming streamer it definitely the responsibility oh, the, definitely dude, I, i'm not i'm saying the complete opposite i'm just saying represent what the community is wanting to see which is generally the popular list i mean you're categorizing them by starcraft or you're categorizing i mean so is twitch okay it's working in parallel so you i i feel like working in parallel there's nothing wrong with working in parallel you, you there doesn't have to be just one person providing this popular list you know that, that's all i'm saying i'm just saying that from the standpoint of tlb tl.net being a community list um shouldn't we show what the community wants to see yeah but or here's what you're saying you're, you're falling into right, the territory are, are i was falling that? into early where we start talking no, you, you about are for the, you are because the, a lot of the we, people we, that we you feature just happens standards. to be popular people too but i'm just yeah, saying yeah, but like right. but that, it, that just if happens team liquids, over. If, if team liquid showed in descending order right everyone stream from top to bottom and you had to click through pages to get to it and they literally made no discrimination whatsoever they didn't use it as a popular list or whatever you want to call it it was just literally this is every stream related to esports now from you know in, in in descending order from the most popular to the bottom how many people at the bottom on page 30 40 50 whatever it is do you think they're, they're going to get like how, how many extra viewers is that going to you know what service is that going to provide people are going to provide any yeah, but probably not. Probably not much in the bottom of the list. But that's not. That's besides the point. The, the point for me is, is just like trying to display what the community wants to see, like trying to show Which what's. Is, in the same way, you've just argued that if something's at the top of Reddit, it's what the community wants to see. Then surely, if it's got the most yeah. streaming numbers, that's what the community wants to see, and that's what Team Liquid does. That's not what Team Liquid. I mean, Team Liquid does it like. It kind of does though. Well. <laughs> It does it because they, I guess, they pick the most popular streamers and put them on feature for the right. most it's, part. Right, it's a combination of people that are relevant based on fame and relevant yeah. based on results. Like there's there's an objective quality to it as well. Like the WCS will auto qualify people to be on the feature list. Okay, I mean, it's a subjective. I mean, I guess it's subjective <laughs> because in the end, it's always subjective, right? For, the same, well, well, that's the problem. Right, you've got it has a component that is not subjective. Okay, sure. Okay, well, I mean, maybe, maybe I just have a, <laughs> maybe I'm just looking at it from the wrong standpoint. But um, I mean, I think you guys I, are doing I, a great I thing. Think I wrong, think you guys right? are doing a great job, Matt. Don't get me wrong. Like, I think what you guys have had has been been functional this whole time. Like, as to what, you know, displaying what is popular and 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 uh, the people who represent or are big personalities in our community and. and and a lot of people want to see. It's just, um, I think, you know, maybe this whole new aggressive approach that you guys have, there's just been a lot of people that I feel like the community kind of doesn't want to see, yet you still put it in that list. You know, it, it might be just the opposite kind of but thing But if the community is so well informed, it knows who it doesn't want to see, how can it then be so uninformed it can't find out who it wants to see? and force the agenda, kind of force Team Liquid's hand. Like, are Team Liquid going to ignore, uh, you know, a streamer who's got thousands and thousands of viewers every day, everyone talking about it, saying how good it is? Are they going to be able to ignore that? Probably not. So yeah, that's what those, I mean. those cases are no-brainers. I'm talking about fringe cases, where it's like, it's not a pro gamer. It's more of a person, you know, somebody who's just popular that's not, like, like Spite, for instance. She's not a pop, you know, she's not... She's been getting 500 or 600 for ages now, like for a long time now. It's just recently that she's kind of gotten to four digits, right? And then, yeah, it becomes a no-brainer. That's like, yeah, of course, she deserves it. You know, she should be on the you know featured list. But there are a lot of people in that kind of fringe range too. And being in like that 500 range is actually pretty good these days. You know, from a streaming standpoint, for especially StarCraft. Yeah, because we got a massive saturation of content that's effectively all the same. So what are you going to do as a streamer to make your stand out and be compelling? For, you know, like Twitch TV should definitely help you figure out yeah, I agree. what that Twitch, is. I agree Twitch can do some. I, 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 right? no, doubt. no doubt about it. There, but, you know, but what I'm saying is, unfortunately, if, if like you said, if 500 is a good number, and like, let's say there was 100 streams, 
and 500 people are watching them all. One guy's got to pony up and figure out how to poach everyone else's. You know, like, surely there's got to be one person that can distinguish themselves. And this is, I think, the, yeah. the, the, the issue we're falling into here is you're kind of wanting almost like the community sites to kind of be like, okay, well, you, we're getting very close to agenda setting. Is what I'm saying. No, no, no. I want, I want some of those, those. You know, I want some of those pro players to have to do exactly what you're talking about, Richard. Mm -hmm. Is to make their site, they make their streams better. I'm tired of seeing some streams I go to and I'm like, I don't even see a camera. I see guys playing, and they're still on the feature. The guy playing with music. There's like yeah, no sound. Exactly. Some yeah. guy. Yeah, yeah. Could literally be anyone playing. Exactly, and that happens sometimes. You know, and yeah, totally. I'm, and so I agree with you. It's just so I'm just just saying that. But you know, you, the list you've, you've got you've got these problems where sometimes you've got players who are personalities and they're not very they're not particularly good, or they're female and there's that vague chance they might get drunk and get the boobs out, which I know everyone loves as well. It is a community. Uh, for, you know, you, you right? Know, but but equally, you may get some top player who like he doesn't speak while he's streaming, but you just watch what he does, and there's no definitive quality in all of those examples and the many other examples that there are out there which is just, I mean they're just broad archetypes they're just stereotypical stuff you might see on your average stream there's nothing out there which suggests one is better than the other that one has more merit or that people want to watch more than one of, of the other and this is what I'm saying it's just like you well, kind of got to look at the numbers and, and unfortunately right or wrong you know it's like crap TV shows sometimes get that's, I mean, I'm not good saying numbers anything and good TV shows Good TV shows get cancelled after one season. It's just, you know, the, the viewing public has a lot of power in that sense. And I don't think Team Liquid's, uh, mm -hmm. you, know, uh, you know, featured page is necessarily the, the solution to getting people past that hump of, of getting into the four figures and beyond. No, I, I, I don't think it is either. I think it's just maybe possibly just one of the things that you can do. That's all, that's all I'm saying. But okay, that's enough. We've been, I think we talked about it enough. Uh, let's move on. So maybe that's the last point here. Um, let's talk a little bit about, I guess, monetization and maybe sponsors for TL.net. Um, obviously, this community site has to be, it has to make some kind of revenue to pay for itself, right? Uh, so talk to us a little bit about that. Is it just purely just ads and ad banners and then sponsorships or? I mean, mostly, else? yeah. It's mm -hmm. it's the banner ads. It's the sponsored threads. We have TL Plus as well, um, and then there's a little bit in terms of like sponsored events. Like, um, you know, we run TL Attack. We occasionally have sponsors for those. Yeah, how how uh, has then, TL Plus been, by the way? Oh, it's been pretty good. Mm -hmm. Okay, it's, yeah. It's hard to say. We we don't know for sure. Um, you know what to expect. Where like where it'll be going in the future. So it's the, kind of the initial influx was was really good though. Yeah. For, <laughs> okay, cool. Um, Cards close to the chest. I, <laughs> um, I, I wouldn't want to play poker with you, Matt. Put it that way. <laughs> <laughs> so the the store does the store generate revenue for the site? Oh or yeah, the and then there's team? yeah, there's the okay. store too that does pretty well. Okay. Uh, which ones are which which revenue channel is probably the biggest one for you guys? Um, I I think it's the banner ads. Okay. It's the kind of the main, the bread and butter. Okay, so this banner ad here, and there's a banner right here too at the bottom too, right? Yeah, there's one on top, and then there's a there's that one, and then there's one um on, on the side on the right. Okay, what about this one in the middle here, bottom middle that I'm looking at? I'm looking at this Xfinity one. Yeah, the uh, the front page one. Uh huh. Yeah, that's it's also one. one. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Good. There's not a lot to say. It's it's an ad. <laughs> yeah, yeah. I just I just wasn't sure there was like three. You know, there's actually three places because I, I I figured they cost differently, right? Based on where you put them. Yeah, on. yeah. Um, right. Okay. Cool. I mean, but like, surely that's that's the sprinkles on the on the ice cream, right? I mean, that isn't the base of. I don't think anyone could make a living off, like just at banner revenue anymore. In esports, right? I mean, yeah, it's it's, it's, it's shrinking quite a bit. Yeah, it's not yeah. not uh, you know of the last five years or whatever. It's the rates have gone way down. You've got to have irons in in other fires for for certain, like uh, you know. And this is again something else that people are finding out. You know, like uh, again the smaller websites that I was lamenting earlier. You know, they get their first ad and they're like, shit, man, we made it. Like it's brilliant. And then it's like, 
you know they look at what they actually get in in, yeah. in return for it and it's like this isn't even gonna this isn't even gonna buy me lunch at the event i want to get to <laughs> let alone get me to the event <laughs> right right you know but, i mean like we couldn't uh, cadreb couldn't have survived on um, just ad revenue alone like no no ways and, and it, now it's almost like kind of an afterthought i think even if you look on the website now don't even think we've got any ads uh currently um because you know what we do is we run our parent company heaven media what we do is we run kind of uh, solutions to various esports related problems so that could be we could we could run an event for you we could host a tournament if you want to reach a key demographic we'll promote your brands and we'll do that through a variety of ways we act as a consultancy company and mm-hmm. sometimes this will involve a very small component of that service will be yeah we'll stick your ads on our websites yeah but but equally it might be you know that doesn't even enter the equation i mean the news websites for a, a good while were almost like lost leaders to the other business yeah yeah uh, and they, they were like an essential part of the business because they were the way we would directly communicate with the demographic that we were hoping to if you like you know put in touch with whichever our whoever our client it's interfacing yeah yeah got it yeah got it but um but yeah they like certainly these days i think ad revenue is like such a tiny part of what you need to be doing to to survive in the current esports climate. Yeah. So, so Matt, any thoughts on adding more revenue channels to to this? Uh, I mean, there's there's always stuff we're experimenting with. Like, you know, we we're working on expanding the store, which which uh, has been helping a lot. Um, you know, there's always different ideas, but it's hard to get stuff in motion, just because typically they have to be uh, you know thought planned out pretty far in advance and stuff. Is it a a manpower issue or? Just mostly planning. I mean, it's kind of a combination of things. It's, it's you know, it's, it's it's hard because there's not a ton of really good ideas for ways you can do it for a website. So you're a little limited just in terms of where your options even are. Yeah. Yeah, for, definitely from a yeah. So it doesn't like maybe it's not so much uh, something that you have to put in a website as much as some of the services service oriented things that Richard was talking about that Kadri was talking about. Have you have you guys gone thought about any of those? type of options you know we've thought about it but we haven't explored it super seriously in the last uh, year or so okay what about the sponsored threads uh, and the sponsored news I mean is that a big revenue generator for you guys not a huge one no it's it's um, you know it does okay it's also extremely low effort for us so the the <laughs> payback uh, yeah yeah the like the actual you know ratio of effort we spend on that so what we generate is pretty good but it's not not like not like a huge part of our business I've done I've, I've I've done one or two in the past. One of those. Yeah, hey, yours were good. I remember that. Yeah, it was. I mean, it helped get. Did it some did, of the did it work started. out for you, Chris? I don't know. We we oh I don't know. No no no. It's like asking a man who bought the spray on hair like honestly, you're happy with the results. It generated like ten thousand views or something, which is like I'm not gonna get ten thousand views like, you know, when I was first starting Pro Corner and and I think I, maybe I did it for climbing the ladder too. I think when we first started, so. Yeah, they were good. This is definitely a good way to, to um, you know, get in front of folks because the placement's right here on the left, but there's also other placement right on the front page. Yeah, yeah, like on the front yeah, page. It it's down gives here you the, the new tag too. It gives the little yellow thing. Yeah, the new tag sticks out for Draws a few your days. eyes to it. Yeah, so it's kind of cool. Definitely cool. You can kind of see what kind of views some of these generate. And they there's stay in there too. Yeah, they actually stay in this. There's a guy in Twitch TV chat who's wanting to ask about some Valve deal and how that went. Oh, the, Val- the shirts we're selling? Oh yeah, yeah, uh, we yeah. Made, so. yeah. We made Dota shirts that are selling. Um, they're going to be at TI3. Valve is selling them from their store, oh, um, like oh. at the event itself. So oh, okay. that's pretty good. Nice. Oh, wait, wait. You made Team Liquid shirts, or you made? No, they're. Yeah. I'm actually wearing one. Oh, okay. It's, see, it's oh, it's just that, like the, good the hero itself <laughs> in the shirt. It's, yeah, we made these shirts and we sent them to Valve and said, like, can you can you please let us do this? And they said, okay. So now we are selling Valve merchandise. You're selling Valve merchandise? Wow. Yeah. So, I mean, does that work in the sort of same principles to the in-game store, which is, you know, Valve take a cut, you take a cut based on unit shift. shifting? Yeah. Well, the, the way it works out is that we sell them from our store. Like, we, we do handle all the manufacturing and the design, and then we, we buy a bunch of them. You know, we get a whole bunch made up, and then we sell them in our store, and then Valve buys a bunch from us, like, at a wholesale price, and then sells it in their store. Oh. Okay. And also, there's you know the whatever the partnership agreement is. There's a percentage that goes both ways. 
Oh, okay. I mean, that works, too. I mean, you guys are suppliers, basically, in that. Yeah, it's like a, like a licensing deal, basically. Yeah, yeah, got it. Okay. It's all their, uh, their artwork and stuff. It's all their IP. Very cool. Very cool. All right, why don't we take some questions from the callers? Does that sound good? Sure. All right. If you guys got any questions for us, go ahead and add me on Skype. My Skype ID is ChanmanV. And I'll pull you in the call. Anything for myself, Richard, or Matt Hayoka here? I'm just waiting on some guy to come in asking why his thread was deleted. <laughs> Please, God, let that happen. That's oh, the sort of shit you. I get when people call into my shows. <laughs> no, so I, please, it's, 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 it's going to be hate on me for like, uh, hate on me for somebody's stream getting pulled from the room. Can I get to have that happen to him in person <laughs> once? <laughs> oh, God. Oh, here goes Ken. Ken, Ken wants to ask. Oh, yeah, yeah. Uh, Kennedy wants to ask, have you sent him his exclusive t-shirt yet? Oh, no, I haven't. I'm sorry, Kennedy. It was, it, oh, I was going to do it yesterday, but it was it, raining. Is, it, is it a shirt that has the word booted on the back? <laughs> no, it doesn't. <laughs> the what? special get only t-shirt. get only t-shirt. Okay, okay, cool. Come on, no, come on, no, no callers. Or if you don't, if you don't want to call on Skype, go ahead and type in. Your, type your questions into the stream chat. I'm sorry, we'll guys. I'm not very famous. <laughs> it's okay, man. We're trying. We're featuring. What you, right you should have done we're is TL you featuring you right now. Controversial in while we were talking. CTL Just feature. something absolutely <laughs> outrageous, and I never wanted to want to talk about that at this juncture. That's generally what I do. That's 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 what I've done for ten years. So. Yeah, I, I don't have a whole lot of super controversial opinions. I'm sorry. You're so, so pragmatic about it. I know. See? A pragmatist in esports, what well, next? Did MIR or Muffin get any better since I left? No, it's still super boring. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, our, our, we have all these staff forums, but there's like no activity in them. They're like the most boring forums on the planet. <laughs> oh, yeah. I can imagine. I mean, you guys probably always talk, I mean, talk to each other on chat anyways, right? A lot yeah, we, a lot of it just happens on Skype now, so. Yeah. Staff forums are just... Not what they used to be. Very sad. Maybe Richard prefers the staff warmth again. <laughs> we just we just sit in a Skype channel all day. I mean, I I've got so little time to interact with uh, most of the volunteers. It really sucks yeah. um, because obviously we're developing a new website. That's generally not the rule. Um, so now I only sit, I only come in, I sort of kick ass and remove people's privileges. So I'm kind of like this horrific parent figure. It just comes in when things are bad now, like so. It, 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 it kind of sucks. Yeah, you've just got all these guys who, are, yeah, you got all these guys who are maybe thinking, oh, if I hang around enough, he might, you know, he might give me some good advice, or you know, he might help me, uh, you know, get, get better as a writer. Or, I don't know, whatever it is. What? Why have anyone would volunteer to work under me in the first place? And generally, what happens is it's like, yeah, 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 yeah. This is how you use the admin. Yep, you'll, you'll figure it all out. I'll see you. And then two months down the line, when they've done nothing, I come back and go, yeah, you kicked. And that's about it, really. That's pretty much the whole, only interaction I can have because I spend my day just literally trying to spam this mm. new website and get it updated. So, okay, I'll ask a question. So Philly Cheese, I don't know if this was meant to be troll, but I'm actually going to ask about it. So his he wanted us to ask about Combat X, and I wanted to ask from the standpoint of having somebody. Well, is there such thing as a perma ban on TL? I forget. And if if not, then what? What does it take to allow somebody like Combat X to be allowed back on the site? Yeah, there's you can get permanently banned. Generally, the way it works is that there's a you know you get like permed on the site, and then um, if you try to come back, we'll make you wait like 18 months or like you know a year, um, okay. and then give us a sincere apology, which usually works. Um, but people also give us really terrible apologies, and we just tell them no sometimes. <laughs> As for Combat X, I don't know what he would have to do to come back, but it would have to be pretty insane. He's Yep. Probably the most hated figure on TL in general. Right. I mean, I, 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 I mean, think people on, right don't realize, though, like, right, I mean, people talk about the permabans and stuff as if it's a bad thing. Like, we've got a, we've got a list of people that absolutely are never going to be allowed to use any site I work for at Heaven Media because there's, there's a threshold. And I don't consider this like censorship or Nazism or fascism or anything bad, whatever broad, you know, inappropriate term people want to apply to it. It's just you got to look at it like real life. You know, if you go into a pub and you call the landlord a dick and you spit in his face, chances are, you know, even if he was the most patient landlord in the world, he's going to fucking bar you eventually, you know. And, and 
I mean, like to give you an example, I mean, because obviously the Counter Strike community does feature some of the most mentally ill individuals you will ever come across in gaming. Uh, to give you an idea, of some of the shit I've put up with, I've been called at three o'clock in the morning by my bosses, saying I've just had a, a player on the phone demanding that you're fired because he says you're cheating in Counter Strike. <laughs> He's got my boss's number, called them at three in the morning. Wow. To demand that That's I'm awesome. Banned. That's awesome. Uh, and then yeah. and, and, and the boss is calling me, going, "What the fuck is going on here?" You know, and it's that's like real that's, hate right there, man. <laughs> yeah, and then 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 you've got guys who you know they they cyber stalk me. You know, like I've had guys, you know, d death threats and and uh, you know fucking taking. Uh, they go on Facebook and they figure out who my family are. And we, we obviously we have different uh, really? surnames. Wow. Okay. Yeah, and I've I've been sent photos of like my little brother, like from an anonymous email account, who we found out who that was. Now, the people who do these things and the people who obsess over it like that much, they're fucking perma-banned. End of story. Like, you've lost the right to benefit from my labor the moment you do something that extreme. And I don't feel in the least bit bad about it. And uh, I know the Combat X situation. I followed it well. It made me laugh. Um, he, it, was, it, was, it was pretty funny. Yeah, I mean, it's, it's such an absurd situation. Um, you know, that guy deserves a permanent ban. I don't think anyone can disagree with it. I saw his pathetic, you know, contrite apologies. And you and he's done that before. And been, let's not forget, it right. wasn't like he got yeah. permabanned all at once, right? He had right. He's given a, a lot of, like, final apologies, and they're always terrible. And, like, half the time he... They just seem so insincere, and it's like he's not really even trying. It's kind of like whatever. Yeah. No, well, the only reason I think some people might bring it up at this point is that, you know, he has gone to some events recently, and... He does seem to be a little different, but that doesn't warrant being, you know, not being permanent for just his past, his past behavior. Because I totally don't blame you guys for doing that. That's for sure. He made your guys' life hell for a while. I too, mean, here's the thing, right? Like and, some people, like no one, no one on a website, right? I mean, think about this, yeah, right? Everyone says all you do is ban people. What moderator wants no one to be using their website, right? I mean, it's so yeah. fucking stupid. It was like when people accused like Black Sabbath of putting satanic messages in the records to kill yourself if you listen to them backwards. <laughs> yeah. What fucking band wants their audience dead? It's fucking stupid. It makes no sense. But this is the shit you get accused of when you're a moderator. Now, you know, I don't feel, I don't, I feel, I like feel that there's grounds for some people to be rehabilitated or whatever you want to call it. And they can come back. And that's cool. And generally what you find is once you've banned someone like eight times, like the, the, the path of like every interaction with someone who gets banned starts out like this. They act like a dick to get attention. They get the attention. You ban them. They create another account to bypass that ban, typically with the same name, because they want you to know they're bypassing the ban, right? So then you ban them again. Then they start trying to disguise it. They come back with names that kind of hint who it might be, or, you know, fuck this website or whatever. Then you ban them again, because we got all the tools at our disposal to find them and ban them. Then they start creating, you know, fuck Team Liquid, uh, you know, fuck fuck uh, Hayoka, kill, you know, accounts called that because they're getting frustrated. You know at that point you've already won the battle, by the way. So they start spamming those websites Psychology and attacking the site and making work. multiple multiple forum threads. And then you have to, there'll be that one night where they think I'm going to win and you stay up all night deleting the threads and banning the accounts and deleting the threads and banning the accounts. Then it goes quiet for a couple of weeks and you get the email. You get the email, hey man, I'm really sorry. I was yeah. going through like, such a bad time in my life right now. I don't know what it was. I, I totally understand that I've acted like a douche and I just really like to be unbanned, right? So then what you do at the point of getting the email, you tell them, no, fuck you, you're gonna have to withhold the ban. Then they try and make some super secret accounts to bypass the ban, right? And then you ban them and you ban them and you ban them. Then they really apologize and they really mean it. And they really mean it, and they're like, please, I just want to use the website. I'll do anything. And then you unban them. And that is, they always end up some pathetic asshole by the end. Like every troll ends up like some pathetic loser. They got outbrained, and that's how they end up by the end. And then the hilarious part is, you see them on the forums, and whenever anyone like does anything bad against the rules, they're the first guys to pipe up about it. They're saying, how dare you? How dare you do this to my beloved website? That is the psychology of trolling in a fucking nutshell. Dude, that, that, that's pretty good, Richard, I have to say. That, that's a There's pretty no good... moderator on the internet that would tell me that's wrong. That's pretty good walkthrough of the psychology of a troller.
Yeah, yeah they, so, it gets progressively angrier, and then it's it's really apologetic at some point. Yeah. It's like a, it snaps. It's pretty funny. Yeah. We get a lot of really apologetic emails, and a lot of them are really, really poorly done. Come on, people, and still no Collins. Are you serious? I'm That's sorry, Chris. This, is, this might be the you first. Know what, well, you probably would have got more call-ins if you were on the featured list on Team Liquid. I can't help but feel. <laughs> trying to bait you here, Chris. I bite. Fuck. Almost. <laughs> I, I know I don't get any masochistic pleasure out of banning people, but some people need to be told, you know, enough's enough. I'd, you know, in an ideal world, everyone in esports is mature, right? In an ideal world, you can have nice things. You can all interact on a forum without an, the need for a parental figure to bang heads together. But unfortunately, you can't. And sometimes you're going to get that wrong as a moderator, by the way. I'm not a good example of a good parental figure. I often engage in the arguments. And then when it just gets to the point where I'm just bored as fuck, I just think, fuck it, I, I'll just ban this guy now. Like, <laughs> like serious. I've, I, he's saying the same thing over and over again. I'm asking him to stop now because I'm bored. He's still doing it. I'll ban him. Fuck it. You know, Got it. It's like giving a kid a timeout. You put you going in the naughty chair. Sorry. <laughs> Let's see. I forgot to read this. And Colin Teal asked, "Can we get some Hayoka modeling photos for the new shirts?" I guess. Well, Wait, I guess you can model question? right now, and they can just take screenshots yeah. of you right now. I mean, I already have all, all the images in the store are are of me as it is. So. <laughs> oh really? Yeah. Seriously. Let yeah, I'm the see. I'm the model in every every picture uh, of teal merchandise. Let me see this. I yeah, even people don't ask this. me to do that for some reason. Seriously, you can't tell because my this. my head is cut out. Oh, I'm just a oh, disembodied gross. What have you done that for? Oh my gosh, it's very sad. Venus to I mean, model. that's such an insult. I'd be really upset, man, if that happened to me. Like seriously. God, stupid. Like you can model God, our t-shirts, but just you know, not your head. <laughs> <laughs> like we feel, we feel less people will buy the T-shirts if we leave your face in. That is like, so, <laughs> that that must be really upsetting. To I mean, you. it'd be better if they just kind of like, like just blurred your face out instead, instead of cutting your whole head off. Well, no, because that, <laughs> that's like, what's wrong with this guy? <laughs> Richard, would you Blurred release? Out. Okay, Dalming like asked Richard, predator. would you release the Kraken on the haters if you could? I saw him spam this. I don't even know. It's not even a real question. If released the Kraken, like, is, like, I don't even know what he's really asking there. Like, uh, you know, what? Like, if I, what, can I go mental with him? Is that what he's trying to say? Or is he saying, is he really saying, <laughs> can I release some mythological figure to, to eat them alive? Yeah. I mean, I guess if he's asking, like, what would I do to, uh, I mean, okay, well, here, here's the thing. I've, I've confronted people who've given me, like, shit for years on the forums, and then I've, I've met them in real life. And I've been like, and you're probably not supposed to do this because it's not very professional to use the esports word. And I've been like, right, what's up? You know, like you've been, <laughs> you've been, you've been dogging me out for two years, calling me a fat loser, fucking saying all this stuff about my family. I'm, I'm in front of you now. Would you care to repeat some of them? People are never, and, yeah, people are never mean in person. They're always very. No, they always say not. Hey man, just I'm just messing around. around. No, it's like the anonymous <laughs> thing. Yeah, locate you with booze. Can I do that? And it's like, I mean, when I was a lot younger, like this is going back to like I-30, so this is before I was even, you know, a vague personality in the scene. I, I fucking offered a guy outside. I was really angry. Uh, there was this team, and my mum wasn't very well. Uh, my mother, sorry, American viewers. My, my mother wasn't, wasn't uh, too chipper, and she had got quite a serious illness. And somehow, because, you know, Counter-Strike community, everyone knows everything about everyone. Uh, this got out, so a bunch of people like tagged up as like you know uh, Richard Lewis's mother, or, you know, is going to die soon, and all this like, horrible stuff. And um, I was while I was casting a game, I think uh, that they were doing. So they were doing it, you know, so that so I would see it and get upset about it. Of course, of course. So I confronted them about that, and then I was like, right, you know, line has been crossed. Let's let's go outside. Um, and they didn't want to come outside. So uh, so yeah, I guess releasing the Kraken. But you grow out of that. I mean, I was like 24, 25 or something. So okay. you, you, you grow out of that. Great, so yeah, great. to answer the question, so enraged that I've thought about, you know, attacking a troll. Yes. But, Jumping uh, in the stands, basically. Yeah, but it, it, but it, doesn't, it doesn't work anymore. I've, I've seen too much. I get, I get worse things said about me now on a daily basis. Right. You know, um, All right. All right. Last two questions. Let's just do two questions here and then we'll, call, we'll wrap. Okay. Ruben Hernandez asks... Hayoka, what did you study in college, uni, etc.? I got a, I studied psychology and also some econ, but I didn't get an econ degree. 
I was uh, I was debating going into grad school to go study uh, behavioral um, behavioral <laughs> economics. Yeah. And so that's what I was kind of into. Oh, okay. Then he got pulled into the world of esports. Indeed. All right, Herb C. Oh. Oh shoot, that's not actually a question. That's a personal. That's a that's a non-show question. Uh, let's see. Uh, okay, it's the last question. So Voltag asks, do you still have a thread of the latest bans and the mods reasoning for banning? Yeah, it's uh, it's in the closed form, I think. There's there's I mean there's kind of two because there's also the thread where people just discuss bans that's in mm. community or whatever. Right. Um. I, I got I got to be honest. That's the sort of stuff that needs to be made public. Yeah, it's I the automated ban list. Yeah, I always yeah. think that you know the community, like when you can hold up sort of like a mirror, you know, the absurdity of like what members of the community do. I think it actually puts what you have to do in perspective rather than not saying anything. Like we always used to just ban people and then not say anything about it. And if anyone brought it up, we just delete the thread. Like you know, it's none of your business. But now I'm like, yeah, you got banned for this. You got banned for this. Here's a screenshot of him doing it, and. Everyone tends to come around your way of thinking then. And it's like, wow, what a, you know, what a ridiculous asshole. And all of a sudden, you're the good guy. So I'd love to see that made public, you know, a list of bands and, and the reasons yeah, why. No, no. Larry yeah, Street. That's, yeah, that's essentially what we have. I was thinking it'd be funny to make a Twitter that just spams it so it publicly shames people. But... <laughs> Dude, <laughs> not bad, not bad. <laughs> that, that'd be good, that'd be good. You could fit it in 140 characters, reasoning yeah. too, right? I mean, most of the band reasons are pretty short anyway, so it would probably yeah. work. Hmm. <laughs> that would be funny. That would be pretty funny. I'd follow that account for sure. Would it be on? No, would it be on the TL.net? No, account? no, it'd have to be its own account because yeah, yeah, there's, yeah. you know, there's like ten, there's however many T bands a day. TL bands. Dude, that'd be .net. No kidding. The future. All right, guys. A live, well, a live well, feed. Exactly. Why don't we wrap and go into shout outs and thank yous? Start out with you, Matt. Any, any shout outs, thank yous you want to do? Shit, I don't have any shout outs. Oh, my mom's birthday is today. I can give her a shout out. Oh, there you go. I have to that's call always, her that's always nice. That's that always nice. Who is this nice shirt. guy? Like, where has he come from? I can't believe it. Like, he's just so pragmatic about everything. And now he's wishing his mom happy birthday. Like, it's yeah. too good to be true. <laughs> Seriously. I don't have any, any other shout outs. I guess visit the website. Teamliquid.net. Teamliquid.net, guys. If you guys didn't know that, which I don't yeah, know I who say, here does not case. know that. Yeah. Rich, you want to give some shout-outs? Yeah, uh, great to uh, finally meet you, Matt. You do a lot of uh, good work over at Team Liquid. It's certainly been a staple of uh, you know StarCraft for so long now, and any website that's been around for that sort of length of time, you know, over a decade, it absolutely is doing something right and deserves respect. So uh, keep up the good work, and long may that continue. Uh, just to Chris as well, my my host the boss of the show he's a he's a, a, Jeez, a, a lovely man. guy works hard a little bit like salty a... about the featured streams thing I think. oh my god and uh, let's get this clear i am not salty about not it's not me not being on there i just you know i just want to give a lot of other people just like that chances just like that. just reel him in every time <laughs> yeah, man. um but yeah and as well to the uh, uh viewers uh we we had small numbers to begin with and then it, it, it got pretty big so uh, thanks a lot for tuning in and um, yeah, uh, you can catch all my stuff. I'm going to be taking a much needed break, but I will be covering uh, the WCS out in Gamescom. So that'll probably be the next time any of you guys uh, see me on, in front of a camera doing some interviews and stuff in a couple that's, of weeks. So that's uh, in, yeah, that's almost what three weeks. Three weeks. Sorry, it's on okay. a. Tw I go out on the 18th. Yeah, I literally get deal. bundled into the back of a van because <laughs> uh, I have to go out there Throw early. In there. To on the strike stuff. Yeah, they're going to put a again. bag over your head. I know. You honestly, guys it's going like, to Germany? It's, a special <laughs> it's in Germany, right? Wait, where is it? It's in Cologne, right? Manhattan. So yeah, I'm going to Cologne. Yeah, yeah basically I've got to drive because uh, I've already got a flight, but they didn't book it. They want me to do some casting uh, for Counter Strike uh, and some interviews and stuff out in Cologne, which hadn't been factored in when I booked my flight. So, oh, okay. but it should, hopefully, it's going to be me and James Banks forming a dream team. Oh, there you go. Fridge. Yeah, he's so gonna go. um, he's, he's going to be coming out and doing some freelance work for us. So uh, well, I'm hoping the coverage is going to be awesome. Good deal. Good deal. Uh, my shout outs, of course, to our guest, Matt Hayoka. I mean, you do, like, just like Richard said, do a great job. Great job on the site and 
everything else, even though it's giving you shit today about the just some of the things, but it's you're doing an amazing job. And we st- I st- we still have a Star Jewel like death match that we still have not. Oh yeah, we got to play our match. We haven't done that. Exactly, we haven't done that <laughs> yet. So one of these days we'll do that, or one of these days you can give me a walkthrough of Dota <laughs> Dota Two because I I'm hurting trying to learn the game right now. But uh, Richard, obviously, for for always being my co-host in crime. John's not here today, so I love having at least one of you guys here with me, or else I wouldn't do be doing this. I know, slacking again, John. See, oh, who no, did John's, that? Dude, John's probably like on the verge of a breakdown, probably at, at QuakeCon because it's always so crazy for him. But uh, I'm sure we'll hear about that next week. Next week, we, sh- I'm hoping. I'm hoping to have David Kim on next week, but um, we're still trying to get that confirmed because originally it, might, it was supposed to be this week, so this this show was kind of thrown together last minute. So hopefully we'll have him on next week to talk about balancing, and I really want to talk about his process You know, when it comes to balancing because that we don't really get a chance to talk to him about or hear much about that from the standpoint of the community, and I, I'd really like to know more about that, so I think that will be fun, really, really fun to have him on. But uh, you can check out the VODs for this show on YouTube.com slash ChanmanV. You can follow us on Twitter at ChanmanV, at Richard underscore A underscore Lewis, and at Real Hayoka. As if there was a fake Hayoka. But, there was a uh, fake Hayoka. <laughs> some, some guy in North Carolina. <laughs> really? Wow. Yeah. Okay. Well, where'd, where'd your name originate from then? South Carolina. It's a... Uh, it's, uh, well, I... I <laughs> When I signed up to TL, I was taking this class, this Native American lit class. Oh, okay. And it's like a, it's a Lakota word that was like, it's like a role in their ceremonies. Oh, I see. Okay. Okay, cool. Well, learn something new every day. Yeah. And uh, lastly, if you enjoy the show, if you enjoy any of the shows that I do, follow the, oh, click the follow button on the Twitch page here, and I really appreciate that. Best way to get notified when my shows go live. And that's going to be it. So for climbing the ladder this week, this is Chan Man V, Hayoka, and Richard Lewis. We'll see you next time. Later. Peace. Peace.